When are you going to fix the fence? What fence? It's the karate kick quote, Laura. Oh. I think right now. Kent to shame. Oh, Except for maybe Lois. Appreciate that. Lois Lane. Hey, uh, are we on split screen, Mike? Uh, I don't think so, but I'll check. Is that oh. what we want to be on? Did they miss my miss my reveal? No, no, you can see it. we're in gallery view. <laughs> okay. Looks uh, amazing. Let's go around and say, obviously, you are Clark Kent. Superman. Very easy. Very easy. I don't even know if anybody knows who the Mad Hatter is. We know it's the Mad Hatter, but who is it really? It's the Mad Hatter. <laughs> you have to yeah. guess. I love it. Well, and, it says his name right there, so. <laughs> and, and nobody knows who Fruit Ninja is. <laughs> A.K.A. Kung Fu Panda. I did have dumplings tonight, by the way. You did. Perfect. I did. Hey, awesome. Hey, you guys look you guys look phenomenal, Eric. You really you really <laughs> impressed me with your costume tonight. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Very good, very good. Well, we only have Eric for a short period of time. It looks like a little tired, a lot of trick-or-treating tonight, Eric, I'm assuming. Yeah, we, we did a, a fair amount of trick-or-treating. The kids got loads and loads of candy. My youngest gave all of his away to his older brother, and uh, yeah, now we got to deal with that. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you got a drink tonight? Are you already? I do. Your little kind of Kentucky hug there? I do. Nice. We got a, a Pikesville rye right here tonight. Pikesville rye. Scott, what do you got? Uh, I got the Maker's Mock Podolsky. Nice. I love it. I have one. Uh, unfortunately, it's only a three-year Willet, as uh, Eric already got me depressed before the show. He has a four-year, and I have a three-year. Uh, <laughs> of course. Cheers. So, uh, Mike. Yes. You're Mike Zano. I'm Scott Bosman. This is Eric Peterson. We're the Land Geek Guys. We are Land Geek Guys. And why are we here tonight? Well, other than to have some exceptional whiskey, bourbon, scotch, we're here to talk about land investing on Halloween. So we do this every week. So if you're new to the group and you're wondering why there's kind of a bunch of weirdos dressed like odd characters, <laughs> it's because we take our businesses very serious ourselves. Not so much, right? right. Oh, Laura, just shut the lights off. Uh, no <laughs> mood lighting needed, babe. So we uh, so we ask. We only got a few minutes. What what could we ask Eric? I mean, what is he irascible? He's the uh, jot knot. He's the technician. Uh, what kind of questions can we? And uh, by the way, uh, last boot camp, I looked up irascible. It was I finally looked it up, and uh, realized it's not even him. That's why it's funny. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. It's the antithesis of Eric, for sure. Antithesis. <laughs> that word of the night. New segment. Antithesis. <laughs> antithesis. Word of the night. It's like uh, you guys with your costumes compared to me. Much no. better. So, hey, who's the guy that I always say you look like? Because Eric's going to agree with me now. Who's the Christopher, big guy? Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, doesn't he? he can All do right. It. You see Maybe him? a bit. 
Maybe yeah. A bit. Uh, Scott, let's 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 get some uh, insight from Eric before he has to go. What should we ask him? What should we ask him? Well, Eric, how long do you have? I don't know. I could probably hang around for five, ten minutes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Well, I tell you if you had one thing from Eric Peterson, Scott, in five minutes, what would it be? One thing from Eric Peterson in five minutes. I would ask Eric uh, to give us a little uh, – <laughs> I'm not going to be able to concentrate when you do that. <laughs> give us a little uh, inkling into uh, coaching with Lane Geek, why it's so powerful, uh, and why you enjoy doing it. Well, um, I, I, I do love coaching students. Um, it's, it's actually something I wasn't sure about when I got into it. Um, just from the standpoint of, if it would really fit kind of who I am and if I would be comfortable doing it. Um, but it's, it's something that, uh, today I, I really look forward to. I enjoy it a lot. Um, but I mean, Honestly, like it's all about just just helping those students, like giving them the inside information to really accelerate their business. And it's really not it's not that, you know, they couldn't go and, and figure this stuff out on their own. But it's that, you know, I'm a resource to answer their specific questions, to help them find solutions for the problems that they're dealing with today. And, um, you know, I was on the on a call with a client today and, and we spent a lot of time just talking about Craigslist and ads and marketing and, you know, why am I not getting leads and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, honestly, that's all it is, is, is just, you know, dealing with whatever's going on with that particular student at the time. Um, I mean, there's other aspects of it too, right? I mean, we do a, a pretty in-depth strategy call at the beginning and and talk about kind of your why and and where you want to go with the business and all this kind of stuff but after that i mean it's it's just support and and help and um talking about tools and techniques to just really help them grow their businesses i mean i i pretty much share anything with my students you know they can i'm an open book they can ask me any question and I'll give them whatever answer I have. I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid to, to tell them what I'm doing and, and how I'm doing it. So, uh, you know, we just share a lot of information and, and really try to help them grow their businesses. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, it's, it's definitely rewarding for the coaching students going through this. It's, it's a little nerve wracking getting into it. It's an investment, but every single coaching student that comes out of this is, they, they feel success. Uh, they feel the rewards that come with it. It's got to be rewarding for you too to see the growth of people over an entire year because that's how long this coaching lasts is an entire year. So like, I don't know if you can like talk to that for a minute. I don't know. You, you can give us a specific example if you want or not, but just talk about like how much progress people make in an entire year with you. That's got to be awesome to watch. Yeah, it really is. I mean, a lot of times, um, you know, I get a student that, that comes out of flight school um, that that maybe hasn't even sold the property yet. So, you know, one of the first things we're talking about is, you know, county research and, and marketing and, and how do you go out and, and sell this property that, that you already own or properties um, in many cases. And so we, we spend a lot of time with that. But then, you know, once they make that first sale, um, they've taken the thing full circle. And for most people, that really changes their outlook on the business. They can see it end to end. Right. And, uh, you know, that's when they really buy into it. And then they start making bigger steps, taking, you know, buying more property and going out there and really doing the business. So, I mean, some of the most rewarding things are, you know, when I hear from my, my clients and, and they tell me about, you know, a recent sale that, um, you know, whatever the scenario is, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of different ones, but I, one pops into mind. I, I won't mention the, the client's name, but he, uh, he sent me a base camp message and, and basically said, you know, 
I sold another property and, uh, you know, I wasn't even at home. I was, I was at the restaurant with my wife and, you know, we were on our way to a concert and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, turns out he, he collects a down, actually he sends a, a down payment link while he's at the restaurant. He collects the down payment, you know, while he's at the concert that night. And, you know, I mean, he's out having a good time and, you know, spending a couple minutes here and there to communicate with this buyer and, uh, and closes the sale. And, um, you know, he was just super happy about that. And, you know, it's, it's exciting. That's really exciting. Really exciting. Uh, Mike, anything? Yes. Eric, you mentioned open book. If you were to name that book, what would it be? What's your favorite book? What's my favorite book? Give us a book recommendation. Well, I'm just uh, going off what you said. You know, you're an open book to your clients, so I'm thinking book. Eric Peterson. Eric, if you were to recommend a book, I would read the help with this business. Can you think of one that you would recommend? To yeah, I mean, the the one I often recommend is is Rich Dad Poor Dad. So, you know, kind of when I got into to real estate and land investing, um, that was one of the the early books I spent time in. Um, I actually listen to most of my books on Audible. Um, often in the car or maybe while I'm walking the dog, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I think that book is just a great kind of perspective change, right? Um, you know, if you're used to working in corporate America and, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and, and all this kind of stuff, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a whole different way to kind of think about your life and your finances. Um, so I think that's a great place to start. I think a great follow-up book on that one too is the Cash Flow Quadrant. Definitely, that's a phenomenal book that just completely changed my mindset on things. Mm -hmm. So that that was my second book in that series, and uh, I, I really loved it. Um, we need to give a shout out to Mark, to Mock to make his Mock Podolsky because he's he's watching the show. Is he watching? He's watching. I hope awesome. he's in his costume. Oh, you know, he did a great impersonation of an incredible person today. I don't know who it was. But it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> I heard it was pretty amazing. Mark, what do you think uh, of my costumes tonight? Well, of course, you see, Eric, you were... <laughs> look at, he says, I think Dirt Rich is a game changer. I, I'm agreeing with you. It's a game changer. It is get a game it on, changer. Get it on Audible. I used to do Kindles in the car, and Laura said no more. Audible only. I, yeah, I love Audible in the car, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So did we even say who we are? We like, did. Uh, we did? What do you mean, like, yeah. who you really are or who you are? I mean, who we are. You yeah. did. You introduced us all. We're the Land Geek guys. Yeah, I know that. But did we talk about who we are dressed up as? I mean, I'm oh. self-explanatory. We'll start with that, uh, Scott. Um, uh, go ahead. Tell us about your – because tonight we were talking about movie characters – and I think we all hit it on the button. And we're going to bring our guest up who's got a little uh, movie character uh, theme going on as well. But we'll start yeah. with Scott. Scott, um, I'm going to go that you're not Spider-Man. You're exactly right. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, Eric, uh, you know, some people may think he's like uh, Keith Richards' ghost or something. So, no. Uh, Mad Hatter. Mad yeah. Hatter in Wonderland. He looks amazing. In New England, we call you the Mad Hatter, not a Hatter. I don't know how to say what you said, but you're a Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. Like a Manhattan. Mad now, Mike, Mike, your your costume, I have to say, is spot on. <laughs> you could be a little more rotund. Yeah. I had I don't think need some extra stuffing. I don't think uh, many pandas are partake in the intermittent fasting, but... Uh, Yes, we are. We are fasting Wim Hof warriors. Fasting Wim Hof warriors. That's right. That's right. Well, so Poe po was your name, correct? Oh, oh po, yes. Excellent uh, at Fruit Ninja. And oh, whoa, whoa! Superman's coming out. Yeah, Superman's getting hot. Is there hot. <laughs> Superman's hot. Getting hot. It's an emergency. What's going on here? That's exactly right. He's Eric, got some what? lives to save. That's right. <laughs> Well, we should not keep Eric. We did did do us a favor coming on here. We're not going to keep you too long, Eric. We truly thank you for coming on the show. I know our listeners uh, thank you, and uh, you know it's great to see you as the Mad Hatter. 
Yeah, I'm very Absolutely. impressed with that, Eric. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year already. <laughs> well, glad to, glad to spend a little time with you guys and uh, look forward to, to doing it again. I can play the guitar? No, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it never gets old. <laughs> Eric, it was great seeing you. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You bet. We do appreciate it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Take care, guys. Take care. You too. So I think hey, it's uh, not... What? Can you can you tell I've been working out? No. Huh? <laughs> I guess I can. What? Wait, wait, step back a little bit because you. Can't... I mean, I take I take the shirt off and look what happens. The pipes come out. It's craziness. The Clark Kent goes away. Listen, I'm not thinking your wife's gonna be happy to rip that shirt. So no flexing. <laughs> I think it's time we kept our our. our Wait a minute. Oh, there they are. We kept our guests waiting. Should we bring them up? Yeah, let's bring them up and we'll- right, um, a little intro. Uh, uh, we, we, we told him to come on the show as long as he said nice things about Scott and myself and he promised to do so. So let's bring him up. All right, let's he's, do it. He's a coaching client. Uh, he's a phenomenal guy. He's, uh, he's really doing well in the business. And uh, without further ado, Kevin Weimar. Kevin Waymeyer. Wednesdays with Waymeyer. Wednesdays with Waymeyer. Fellas. What's How's going it going, on? Buddy? Good to see you. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good. Doing well. Yeah, you're, short, been... you're shorter on camera. I know, man. I, I'll tell you, man, it really shrinks you when you have to sit down. That's for sure. Yeah. I feel like walking on my tippy toes and around you. My wife's going, like, look at him. He's so tall. He ducks to go into the doorway. I go, me too, Laura. Me <laughs> No, it's much easier to talk to you this way. We aren't as intimidated. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's been a long time. What has it been? Like a week since boot camp? A week and a half? A week and a half, yeah. Time flies. Tell us about your outfit, Jurassic Park, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went original. I went uh, Alan Grant from the original Jurassic Park, you know. Nice. So we had all the new movies coming out, and I said, hey, why not? I love it. I love it awesome you're a big fan of the jurassic park movies i love oh, yeah. them oh yeah cool so <laughs> hey uh we want to interview you for a few minutes uh you are a coaching student what are you halfway through your year something like that yeah just a little over halfway all right so like could you briefly tell us how you found us what your experience has been to date and and how things are going for you people love hearing this stuff yeah, for sure. Uh, so I ran into Land Geek uh, on a podcast. Um, it was a real estate agent uh, podcast. This was well over a year ago now. Um, ended up booking a call just to learn a little bit more about land investing. Talked to uh, my man Mike Zeno for the first time. Uh, we ended up talking. He told me a little bit about the land investing business. Uh, jumped into flight school pretty quickly. Right after that, uh, as I was going through flight school, um, started learning obviously a ton about the business. Um, kept on talking through Mike. Uh, got done with flight school and then really took a break for about a month or two. Uh, kept on talking to Mike about different deals and acquiring uh, property. And then uh, decided uh, to really commit to land investing and started the coaching and started with Mike and things have been going great. Um, I jumped into coaching and uh, my wife decided, um, let's go ahead and make a major life change. So we were living in the United States and then uh, she decided she wanted to take some training up in Canada. So we are living in Canada. So it uh, took about uh, a month and a half to two months kind of break from land investing, uh, got up here and uh, started acquiring property. Uh, I have about, um, about eight deals now that I have done and, uh, I attended my first boot camp last week and it was phenomenal. I mean, those boot camps, I'll tell you what, I mean, uh, it's a game changer for sure. So 
Uh, right now, currently, uh, I am kind of in a growth phase right now. Uh, so I had a lot of good deals. I went from, you know, a couple of deals uh, every other month and then started hitting deals almost mm -hmm. weekly. So, and uh, uh, right now, so uh, right now, just trying to deal with the growth. As Mark Podolsky always says, new problems, good problems. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Scott, how come you're on mute? How come you're on mute? What happened? I didn't mute you. I'm, I am. I'm just trying to pull up some. Uh, I want to see the comments on my screen, so I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, so all right. And then I tried to unmute you. You tried. And then to you me. interrupted the whole thing. Just be. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> Mark good also thing. always says, Kevin, new problems good problems right and i believe that like deal flow right that's one of the first problems you want to create you want to send so many mails out that you have so much deal flow that you almost don't know what to do with it and that's a good problem to have it starts you to have to look at systems and automation uh, intake manager it causes you to really have to reframe your thought process about the business so new problems good problems is definitely um i think a good little mantra that we bring uh you know we talk about yeah, absolutely. I think that's, uh, you know, one of the biggest things and that's something that you preach for a long time is is deal flow and making sure that you're hitting your M&Ms each week, your mailing and marketing. Uh, and really, uh, you don't see things come quickly. I mean, this is definitely a marathon. It's not a sprint. And when people don't see instant results, you just kind of got to hang in there. And it's not really month one or month two, but really three and four is when you really start, um, you know, seeing some some action, some consistent action. And uh, that's really where the, the business took off for me. That's cool. Yeah, it's definitely about laying the groundwork, putting the systems in place, and then you can explode into those systems, you know, into those areas uh, rather than focusing on task by task, right? You, you lay the foundation, you put the systems in place, and then you launch a bunch of deal flow into it and you just see what happens. And if you have to tweak it, you tweak it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, this definitely uh, is a business where you uh, fail forward for sure. I mean, every new uh, level that you hit um, you're going to run into some roadblocks, but once you kind of hit those roadblocks and uh, overcome them. I mean, uh, one of the best things about uh, boot camp was going in there and meeting some of the, the new land investors and you can kind of see how far you, you've you come, uh, but then you get to see some of the land investors that have been doing it for a while. Uh, and it gives you some aspiration and motivation that, hey, I mean, people are really making a good living off of this. And uh, it's something that you can, you know, feed your family and, uh, and, and really have something awesome. So, uh, you know, that, that boot camp, that boot camp was a, a game changer for me. Hey, Kev, uh, give me an example of a huge aha moment in this business. It could be a deal. It could be a moment where you realized that this was like the real deal and you wanted to stick with it. Oh man, that's a, a great question. So uh, really, I think it's for the first deal. Most people, uh, when you sell that first deal, uh, mine was a cash deal. Uh, and you're like, once it hits the bank account, you're like, oh my gosh, like, this is awesome. You know, so that was my big, first big aha, like, okay, this is going to work. Uh, now getting into the business uh, a couple months in, uh, I really realize that uh i am i can't be an expert in in everything um that you have to hire good people and yeah. that was the biggest aha moment for me um you know scott todd talked about it um about a month ago that you have to be a ceo of your business and uh, you have to hire the right people um, put them in the right seats and that's when the business took off i mean when it came to ad writing and marketing and an intake manager. Those were the three best hires that I've, I've ever made for my business. And, and that was probably the second big aha. And now it's like, what else can I outsource? Because, you know, I know this business works now. It's just 
how do I get the right people in the right seats so that way we can get this train moving. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's it's amazing uh, to me that uh, like I continue to have aha moments in this business. Like really amazing things happen all the time. Uh, for instance, today uh, I had a buyer lined up for a property. He sent me two hundred fifty dollars to hold the property. I said, you know, this is non refundable. He's like, okay. Uh, so he uh, he decided he didn't want the property because he found out it cost $9,000 to get power to the lot. Well, this afternoon, I'm at my job as a physical therapist and I had, a, I had 15 minutes of downtime. I get a phone call. There, there's a guy uh, standing on the property and he says, hey, is this property still for sale? I said, yeah, how'd you find out about it? Uh, well, I saw it on Facebook and it just so happens I'm the neighbor and I want that property. So I went from a failed cash sale, uh, one second, that was this morning, to three hours later, this guy calling me and telling me, I'm the neighbor of this property and I want it. Can I make you a cash offer? It's just like, that's never happened to me before. That's awesome. But it's just another aha moment that like, wants you to keep going forward because you want to see how much more you can experience. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's a good deal. Did he buy a cash or did you buy it on terms? He's buying it on cash. He sent me a hundred dollars earnest money. He's going to buy it on cash tomorrow. So I love that. Awesome. That's great. That's but awesome. You know, you know what? Thank you, sir. You know what made that happen? Mike Zeno. Tell me. Deal flow. Hmm. Where's your sign? <laughs> <laughs> There it is. <laughs> you write that yourself, Mike? No, I think my wife or my sister-in-law did. My they are they have really good cursive they, writing. I wrote it. Great it. Hand hand it. Hey, hey, can we, I, I need to give a shout out to my my uh, my wonderful wife as well because she provided me with a sign. Well, and you with a sign. Where is it? Look at look at this fancy thing. She went all out. We like got we got signs now. We got mugs. We got T-shirts. We're gonna be drinking a lot with these size mugs. Yeah, right. Isn't that nice? Uh, can, you, about, can you buy those online? Well, I tell you what. I think Food. I think I think every guest that joins us on Nightcap should probably get one of these in the mail, don't you? Oh man, yeah, for sure, a hundred percent. <laughs> can we bring up the refill it's time yeah let's do it here he comes straight out of new england there. <laughs> yeah, i feel like you need to stand up wait 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 what what is that what's on your head it's it's my bald cap not that i oh, need one bald I cap. yeah you know, let me just get that down you don't know who i am do you bosman no, I, well, I do know do. because I have boys uh -huh. and, I, and I read books. I, I doubt the second part, but I do know you have boys. So yes, tiny sidekick, I am Captain Underpants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> la, la, la. All I love right. the jockeys. We drinking here? Kevin, drinking you look here. sober. You go, here, here, wait, wait, there. hold on one second. Oh, but I'm so excited. Kevin, what do you got there? I don't think you told us yet. Did I ask you what, what are you drinking? Oh yeah, I went uh, international, boys. I Whoa. went. Uh, Hello. Wayne Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky. Canadian whiskey. Wait a minute! What happened to Superman? Wait, are you? Are you? Oh, wow! Doesn't he look like Bat Dad? You guys ever seen that guy on? Uh, I love on Bat Dad. Bat Dad. That's so good. I forgot the name. What's the What's the wife on Bat Dad? What, uh, you remember her name? Jen. Yeah, Jen. 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 What are you doing? Going to the gym? What are you going to do? Squats. All right, let's do this. Everybody deserves a cocktail. I sold the property this week. I'm drinking. What? Oh, yeah. So I didn't tell you guys this. Uh, the two, I sold those two properties to Jeff Detner wholesale at Boot Camp, which are technically my first properties. 
And then the guy who was going to buy my land called me and was like, Hey, I'm ready to, to, to buy that. And I'm like, yeah, just sold it. Awesome. And I'm like, but whatever, I'll just go find somebody else. So in 24 hours, I had a land geek guy wholesale me a lot, four grand. And I sold it to the other guy for 10. So Ben Forbes, you've had three sales in the last week. Yeah. It's crazy. That's big time, man. Congratulations. Yes. I'm, I, I hit that one point, Kevin of like, Hey, your first actual deal. So very pumped. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Oh, so good. Uh, it motivated so good. you so much to, to uh, put those big boy pants on. Big yeah. Boy pants. He's got well, them I, I had, I had my awesome, uh, you know, costume. I went out with my kids with, but uh, it, it tore. I was a six foot eight uh, blow up unicorn that lit up from the inside, but. It didn't survive the event that I went to. It's very so sad. did did kids run to you or from you? Um, <laughs> actually, all of my kids were blow ups, and I got like LED lights. So we were great. Last year, though, I was I did this cast this uh, Captain Underpants at a party, and uh, we had people coming from all over the neighborhood. Be like, what is going? Do I hear Captain Underpants? So, if you don't know me, if you haven't met me, I'm not the smallest guy on the block. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. These are uh, size 8X underwear that I'm wearing over a pillow. It's pretty soft. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're actually pretty hard to find. So, uh, That's awesome. Thanks for the refill, Matt. You bet. Congrats on the sale. All three of them. Yeah, those two don't count, though. Those are hey, like... They're deals. I sold them because Tate told me to. I'm Did like, you make okay. some money? Yeah, so I actually ended up making more. I thought that I had bought them for seventy nine hundred, and then uh, as I went back into LG Pass, it turns out I bought them for seventy three hundred. So I ended up I make about a thousand dollars. I didn't know it. <laughs> it's pretty sad. Deal flow solves everything. It really oh, does. Deal flow. That's why I mailed this week. Exciting. That's what I was gonna say the best way to get deal flow is to execute on your mailings. And uh, a lot of times people have a hard time. That's where if you want to name one place in our business where you get paralysis by over analysis, it's it's mailing. Uh, don't don't do it. It's just basically getting someone to raise their hand, say they're interested, and the negotiation begins, right? It, it doesn't lock you into that price. It just means that you started a conversation. Agreed. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Matt Forbes. All right. Later. <laughs> we'll talk to you a little bit now. Going to bed. <laughs> Very late. Thank you for staying up for us, Matt. Very it tired. The East Coast, as I can attest. Yeah, it's too. Oh, I just kicked oh. him out. Oh, wow. That was horrible. That just happened. I just got to bring him back. <laughs> So, uh, Kevin, Kevin, let's uh, let's ask you one more question. I didn't wait, mean to do that, Matt. Wait, wait, what happened? I no, I was happy to just fade off. No, I, I, Kevin's like, I took my hat off and everything. Mid comment, I cut you out. I just want to apologize. Now I'm going to cut you out again. Legend tells of the legendary warrior who was the stuff of legend. <laughs> Thank you for that. Talk to you soon. Taking the pillow out. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's funny. Uh, Kevin Waymeyer. Yes. Yes. Let me ask you one more question. Shoot. So uh, we, we have an amazing community, right? There are a lot of people in this community who they're just starting out. They they can see that the the model of the business uh, makes sense. Maybe they've done a deal or two. Uh, what would your recommendation be to these people who, uh, maybe they're just, uh, maybe, maybe they're nervous. Maybe they're, 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 they're a little bit, uh, uh, reluctant to take the leap in, you know, into the next level. Maybe they're with the investor toolkit and they're reluctant to move forward with flight school, or maybe they're in flight school and they're reluctant to move forward with coaching, even though they know because there's so much evidence in this community that those things would be good for them. So like, what would you recommend to those people? What would you say to those people? You know, that's a, a great question because I think we all start out that way. I mean, I definitely did. I looked, uh, you know, I was watching, you know, this, the nightcap, I was, you know, doing everything that I could listening to the podcast. And I thought, you know, how great would it be to do that? But 
you know, I've never done anything like that before. Um, I've always, you know, worked, you know, regular corporate job and sales. And uh, I think one of the biggest things that uh, made me take the leap um, was just committing to the process and uh, just keep moving forward. Um, every time I got nervous to do something, I'm like, oh man, I don't, I don't want to post something on Facebook. What if somebody says something mean about me on a Facebook post or, you know, put scam on it or something like that. But I did my first Facebook posting and the amount of response that I got back, um, my first Craigslist postings, the amount of response that I got back um, was, was very overwhelming. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, and then the second one gets easier. The third one gets easier. So my biggest thing is just, you kind of just got to jump in. Uh, and like I said, you, I mean, you, things are going to mess up and things are, you're going to fail essentially. And, you know, you're going to upset people. But the thing is, is as long as you just keep progressing, you know, you're fine. I mean, you're, it's going to happen. And, um, uh, I mean, I can't tell you about the community. I mean, Mike, you, I mean, everybody, Mark, uh, Tate, Eric, I mean, everybody's here realistically to help you. And when you do post something on the motivational, uh, page or any land geek page, uh, somebody's going to reach out to you, whether that's publicly on the Facebook page or, in a private message, somebody's going to reach out to you and answer your question. And that's the the coolest thing. And even when Matt Forbes talked about it, Hey, I had some deals and I sold it to another land geek investor. Guess what? That was my first deal. Um, you know, I sold a cash deal to another investor and guess what? They sold it and they made good money on it. So, uh, everything comes full circle. And, uh, the, the number one thing that you have to do is, you have to take action and you have to be consistent with that action, not for a week, two weeks, but it's got to be a two to three month period before you see anything happen. That's awesome. It's a slow turn, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Mike, when we, when we started out, I mean, he just kept on, Hey, you got it. This is going to work. Somebody's going to buy this and you know, whatever lot, I was looking at to buy, he was, you know, coaching me through it and, uh, it's been great. And then, uh, you know, when I switched over to Tate, I mean, each, each coach, each, uh, person, this community has a strong suit to them. Uh, so just reach out to these people and, um, you know, I'm telling you, you won't regret it. That's for sure. Awesome. That's awesome. Appreciate that, Kevin. Yeah. How about a favorite book? Any favorite books? Any recommendations? So uh, I'm going to recommend two. So uh, the first one that kind of changed everything and got me to reach out to the Land Geek is actually The Compound Effect. And that's just uh, by Darren Hardy. Look it up. It's a great book, uh, especially somebody that's starting out about consistency and, and making it happen. Uh, now that I'm uh, well into the career, I'm actually reading uh, Profit First, uh, just because I made all these land sales, some of them cash, and I'm like, hell yeah, let's go buy more land, and spent every penny that I had in the business on buying more land, which wasn't the right move, so... Um, you know, so that's a good book about uh, just managing your, your financials in your business, so recommend that book. Awesome. Very cool, dude. Well, hey, we wish you all the luck. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, Kevin. Uh, thanks really for coming great on. It's, 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 it's awesome to know that you are uh, excelling and that you're executing and that you're, you know, it's all about just going through the motions, right? And it's, it's getting to the point now for you where it really is, it's not so nerve wracking anymore. It's not so stressful anymore. Now it's just kind of going through the motions and getting your system set up and you are building that land buying machine and that land selling machine. And I mean, that's just amazing. It's awesome. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I couldn't uh, be more thankful for the, the Land Geek community, uh, especially, I mean, if anybody took one thing out of this call would be to, to make it to the boot camp, uh, meeting everybody there in person, live, everybody's got the same mindset as you. And, uh, you know, I wish I would have done boot camp, you know, months and months ago. So uh, if anybody takes hit the next boot camp, I'm telling you, it's a great time and uh, you won't regret it for sure. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Kev. All right, All right Kev. Well, thank you. Hope you have a wonderful night. Hope uh, Wayne Gretzky does you well. <laughs> <laughs> he's never failed me that's for sure all right well we'll talk soon we'll have you back on the show how's that we'll have you back on we'll catch up with you and uh thank you so much and uh thanks for the jurassic park uh reference uh great movie all right buddies you guys have a good night all right we'll talk to you soon bye awesome thanks kev hey mike uh roberto chavez just hopped on so i gotta say a little something about roberto chavez i I first spoke to Roberto Chavez about a year ago and I have a feeling I'm not, I have a feeling his life has, ch has changed. Not, not because of me. That's not what I'm getting at. But well, Scott, you're a life changer. I'm agreeing whatever, with you. Whatever. Anyway. Oh, he, uh, Robert, Roberto Chavez said, uh, my biggest regret is my biggest regret is not starting sooner. Yeah. Well, awesome. you know, uh, that's the thing. You take action, results happen, and then you think to yourself, geez, I should have taken this action sooner. But, you know, you take the action when you're ready. So you really can't really have regret. You can only just have encouragement to move forward with full power, right? Right. That's awesome. Do we have any segments? You've, you've been kind of quiet tonight. Well, you know, I, I feel like I can't be I'm, – I'm hidden behind a mask, and I'm thinking how would Poe act? I would say more dumplings. In fact, I'm saying more dumplings. Laura, more dumplings. <laughs> All right. You want a segment? We got a segment. A segment uh... I, you know what? We have some content tonight. I even prepared, but maybe we should wait till next week. I don't know. Yeah, we're 45 minutes in. So whatever you want. Hey, Scott, I default to you. You default to me to Batman. To Batman. Batman. I'm Batman. And I'm Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> I think it's someone who's, someone who's probably, I, there's probably a couple of people out there that's their first time ever watching our show. Listen, I, yes. I think I'd beat you. Wait, I think I'd beat you. I think I would. Yeah, you probably would. Okay. I just wanted to hear that. Anyway, what, what do you got? What do you got? I'm saying this is probably some people's first time watching us. I want to say yes. We do have a little cocktail every week, but every week, we do talk about land investing. This week's a little bit more fun and jovial because it is, after all, October 31st, a.k.a. Halloween. And I'm, I'm just, you know. So we're here every week, and Mark says, breathe in the dumplings, breathe out the rice. <laughs> I had a, a lot. Mark, I broke the fast today with a lot of both of those. So um, uh, I could probably go for a some. A lot of both right of now. those. I could probably go some some more of those right now. And Mark... Your New England accent is getting better every time. I don't care what every, every time. Every time. All right. So I think we should do a segment. You ready? We're going to have to have Mark come on for a segment time see if he can pull the segment off that I do because he likes the accent. That'll be fun. Sometime we'll do that. I, I, I want to say this one thing. Uh, we've had what? Is this our 300th episode? I think it's 450. Oh, 450. How was I so off? You yeah. know, for for us not to have had Mark Podolsky on yet. Did we have him on? Well, we had him at the boot camp, but did we have him on? It doesn't count. So I think... Mark Podolsky, we're calling you out. you got to come on the show for even a five minutes. We need to have you on this show. Live. Mark Podolsky, our 500th episode. That will be monumental. And by the way, we're at 499. Right, right. <laughs> Wait, I went 22 hours without eating, broke the fast with a nice glass of wine and Mexican food. I think I have GERD. You have GERD? That's not good. Take some Pepsi. It really helps. It really it's does. It's all right, though. You are a fasting Wim Hof warrior. 
If you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, we love intermittent fasting. Uh, we we love Wim Hof, who talks I about love Wim Hof. Reading, I love reading about water it. exposure. So yeah, we're extreme. We're about massive action. We are about massive action. Rock said, "If we bring that geek on, the ratings will plummet." The ratings will plummet. Doubtful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why are we fasting, Lisa Torres? All right. This is a whole other conversation, Mike. We should maybe have an episode about what intermittent, intermittent fasting has done for our lives. Well, I, I just to say I lost about fifteen pounds, and Me uh, too. And, and, and yeah, and uh, it just it feels right to be hungry. I don't know. It's weird, and I, I like being hungry because I'm sharp. I do my most best with the land investing when I'm hungry, and my mind is sharp. Wait, I'm gonna spell that sh sharp. Mark held his breath for two minutes and 30 seconds. Hey, that's actually impressive, Mark. That's quite the whole. That's Wim Hof, everybody. I think it's actually pronounced Vim, Vim Hof. Mark, did you do that underwater? Uh, hello, Brenda. basketball. We do, sometimes we do 24 hours. Sometimes we go about 16 to 18 hours. It all depends. What I typically do, uh, Brenda, is I will eat anywhere from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. But otherwise, just have uh, water and coffee uh, the rest of the time. What's well, so funny? Mark, here's the thing. Like, Mark just wrote a comment. He says, I, I like to suffer with cold showers and severe hunger. Yeah, I like to There's suffer. With something cold. about suffering with hunger. It's like, it, it, it's almost addictive. It's empowering, Mike, because you told me this, and I'm like, that's interesting. But it's empowering because you have control over the food rather than the food having control over you. That's the biggest thing. You just remove the fact that food controls your life, and it's like, boom. Yeah. Um, I think we're just programmed to be, when we're hungry, our ment our mentally we're sharp, and we're able to just focus. And I don't know. I love it. And there now there are studies coming out that, that are showing that if you intermittently fast, all these things are better. Your cholesterol is better. Your blood pressure is better. Your glucose, your blood sugar is better. You know what so, else is better? I don't know. I you know think what else we're is something. You know what else is better, Scott? What's that? A taste of whiskey. That's better. Yes. Than there was even a study I read recently that said it doesn't matter what you eat during your eating window, you will still lose weight. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I like using the Zero app on the iPhone. Yeah, it's true. The Zero app. Have you used that, Scott? Mark showed us one time. It's a zero. I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I just kind of have a clock in my head, but but I could maybe do that. Because Batman's shot. I'm shot. All right. You know what? Here's what we need to do a segment. Let's do a segment or two and then we'll call it a night. And then I'll just save my content for next week. I was all. It's the best idea. It's the best idea. You ready? Mark says the best, best appetizer is hunger. <laughs> best appetizer is what? Hunger. Hunga. It is time for the Facebook quote or question of the week. Quote of the week. This is a great one. I saw this today. This, oh shoot, I cut his name off. Uh, That's not good. I took a screenshot of it and I cut his name John off. Doe. Mark Podolsky, maybe you can tell me his name. Uh, anyway, he said, uh, I would like to thank Mark Podolsky on helping me in the land business. I started doing houses as well as land, and I was able to do my first flip using his method. This works with houses just like it, just like it works with dirt. I think I have a leg up on the investors in my city because they are not sending offers, just those yellow note cards with no offer. Here's the house that I got using this method. I bought it for $23,000 and hope to sell it for the comparative market value of $115,000. Wow. And it's a manufactured home. Uh, it's got a beautiful backyard, beautiful wooded backyard. So like, this is just another thing that dawned on me today. We've never seen a post like this in our Facebook group. Right. It just shows you, you know what? We know how to build a business model. And I always tell people, you can take that business model, do it anything you want, add zero, do whatever you want. But the bottom line is we're automating, we're delegating, we're building systems, uh, we're eliminating things we don't need. So it's just a solid business model. 
It really is, and it applies to multiple Chad aspects Nixon. of real estate now. Chad, uh, Nixon. Chad, Chad Nixon is his name. Thank you, Mark, for throwing it in there. Uh, Chad Nixon. And uh, yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. That's awesome. Solid business model is what we're talking about. It's how, and you know, fact is you can do it and delegate, automate, eliminate, and you're still working just a couple hours here and there. So that's the beautiful part of it. For sure. For sure. One more segment. Let's do it. Just one more segment. One more. Well, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a complete nightcap without you. Complete me, huh? I was just completing you. Wait a minute. By the way, nice. Did you have that under your Superman shirt? Like, how'd you do that so quick? Huh? I thought what because if, my costume was so boring, I would at least need to change it up halfway through. What if Superman really was Batman and Batman was Superman? That'd be a twist. That would be a twist. That'd be that'd bring Batman v Superman to a whole new level level. All right, so I lost I lost my Boston Lega. I lost my Boston Lega segment card here, but you know what? Here's what we got to do. It is time for the Boston Lega segment of the week. And I always got to show this word, my favorite word, cheetah. Cheetah. Don't play cards with a cheetah. Do not play cards with a cheetah. It's my, ever time. it's my favorite ever. So um, the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a little bit more Boston slang. Okay. Oh, okay. Huh? All right. Does that sound okay? Slang's my alley. And, I, and I'm hoping the, uh, these are as common as, as Google portrays. But uh, if I go to Dunkin' Donuts, Mike, what am I going to get? Do you have Dunkin' Donuts out there? We have Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, man. What are you going to get? What are you going to get? A coffee? No. What do you call the donuts? A donut? I don't eat them, though. Uh, a Krella? This is supposed about... to be a Boston thing. I know. You're talking about Krella? Bostonites, they call them donkeys. Donkeys. Ah, yeah. You know what? I'm an intermittent faster. I don't eat those, so I don't. Pick, uh, uh, I go to Dunkin' right. Donuts. I get a black okay. coffee. All right. Well, well, let me let me have another one. Uh, no, we call, wait a minute, Laura. We call like, Dunkin' do you, Donuts dunks. What do you call the TV remote? The clicker. The clicker. Well, what would you call it? The remote. No, that's not right. It's a clicker. <laughs> and if you lose the clicker. You probably have a cheetah in the room. Someone is trying to cheat you out of a show. I'm Batman. And I'm Paul. Mike, have you been doing your squats? <laughs> Mark Podolsky, have you seen Bat Dad? He used to be on, uh, what was that platform before that went away all of a sudden? Oh, it's hysterical. YouTube? No. It's still there. No, he, he made it, he made his fame on what well, there was a smoke social media platform that he made his fame on. It, it was around for a little while and then it went away. Anybody help me out? MySpace? MySpace? No. No. Music. Anyway, bad M dad. Musically? <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, all right. Hey, Mike, we'll I have some good news. Tell me. I have significant content planned for the next episode of Nightcap. Right, and there'll be no costumes. Vine! That was it, Jake Martin. And Matthew Forbes, it was Vine. That's where that's where Bat Dad came to be. Love like you YouTube Bat Dad. I shall. All right. I shall. So anyway, uh, tonight was fun. We should dress up every week. Yeah, the problem is I'm craving dumplings, and there are some in the fridge, so. <laughs> you have dumplings in your fridge? We had Chinese food in honor of my costume. Costume? Costume. In honor of my costume. <laughs> that was, that was well, rather, 
I think I think we should thank Kevin Wehmeyer, Matt Forbes, yeah. Eric Peterson for helping yeah. us with our show tonight, huh? Batman, Superman, Poe, the Mad Hatter, Mad Hatter. That's it. So, without further ado, Scott, thanks for completing me. Oh, dude, thanks for completing me. I can't wait till next Halloween now. Yeah, we can have Halloween every week. It's, we're in charge. Do you know what I can't wait for next? Christmas? Nightcap the Musical Volume 2. Yeah, if anybody has, uh, well, no. Well, if you have some musical requests, we'll entertain them. But, yeah, we're going we're gonna to bring it out. And we're going to bring it out hot. I'm already compiling my music list. Really? Oh, yeah. Nice. I got three or four songs that are All ready right. to go. Well, it's time for the outro, my friend. All right. So let's have a Halloween toast. What do you want to say? I don't know. To all of our uh, spectacular Land Geek members. This community is phenomenal if you if you haven't seen and uh, we want you to take advantage of it. So I say gremlins, away. gremlins and goblins, just like my and marketing. There you go. Exactly. Scott, All right. Cheers. Scott, a.k.a. Batman, a.k.a. Superman. It was great seeing you. It was great seeing you too, dude. There's our outro. Oh, wait, no music. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. That's why, because we had to play it. Doing it again. There it is. Thanks, guys. Listen, game quick.